everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at this 2021 Lexus ES250 all-wheel drive. Uh, this is the seventh generation of the ES. This is Lexus's relatively big, comfortable, primarily front-wheel drive luxury sedan. Uh, it's a midsize. Uh, this generation and the one that preceded it share their platform with the Toyota Avalon. Prior to that, the ES was built on the same platform as the Camry. That said, the Avalon and Camry of today are pretty closely related, so I tend to kind of group the three vehicles together. Either way, the ES has long represented comfort, consistency, luxury. Uh, it's never really been about performance. This one here is the new for 2021 ES250 model. Uh, Toyota and Lexus started adding all-wheel drive to their midsize sedans last year. Uh, the Camry has always offered this two and a half liter four cylinder engine, but for 2020, it gained all-wheel drive as an option. Previously, the Avalon and the ES were only available with either a gas V6 or a four-cylinder hybrid. This new all-wheel drive model introduces a new powertrain to the Avalon and ES lineup. It uses the same two and a half liter four-cylinder. And in the case of the ES and Avalon, it's only offered with all-wheel drive. So that's somewhat interesting. It seems like Toyota had this two and a half liter four-cylinder engine that they designed an all-wheel drive system for and wanting to offer all-wheel drive in the ES and Avalon went ahead and made the two and a half liter four cylinder available with the ES and Avalon as well as a simple way of offering all wheel drive. Anyway though, this one is pretty nice, pretty loaded, uh, super comfortable, really serene ride. Let's take a tour of the ES250 all wheel drive here and then take it for a drive. The ES has never been the best looking car on the road. Toyota tries to take a pretty conservative approach to design and a lot of times it just ends up looking a mess. That said, this one looks better than in generations past. Still got the Predator grill. The headlights are still rather fragmented, but altogether, I guess you could say it looks stately, and that's the idea with the ES here. This one is riding on 18 inch wheels, so pretty conservative there. Decent sidewall. Again, this car is more about comfort than it is performance. This one's a nice pewter silver color. It's kind of a champagne beige. Here's the badge, so you can see all-wheel drive ES250. There's your Lexus badge there. Let's take a look in the trunk here. Power opening trunk. So this one came with a rubber cargo mat. The trunk isn't enormous. It's probably big enough for most people. That's a relatively heavy duty tie down for a car like this. That's interesting to see. That adds some utility. Not much else. Looks like provisions for a cargo net. Looks like there's a pass through. So you'd be able to slot a pair of skis through there without having to put down the entire rear seat. So there's a handle to close the trunk manually. Then there's also that little button. Okay, so here is the window sticker. You can see this is a 2021 Lexus ES250 all-wheel drive. That color is called Atomic Silver. It's assembled in Georgetown, Kentucky. Uh, this one, as equipped, comes in at $52,900. Under the hood is a 2.5 liter four-cylinder with 203 horsepower. That is mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission capable of sending power to all four wheels. The EPA rates this thing at 25 city 34 highway and 28 combined. I guess that's okay, given that this isn't the hybrid and it does offer all wheel drive. This one's pretty nicely equipped. You've got that hands-free power opening and closing trunk. Uh, comes with a premium package, so it has memory seats, tilt telescoping steering wheel, power folding outside mirrors, rain sensing wipers, heated and ventilated front seats. There is a heated steering wheel. This one has the really nice Mark Levinson audio system. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. So this is obviously a luxury car, so the materials in here are really premium, but they also just feel extremely well put together. There's no hard plastic in the upper half of the driver's seating area here. This is a nice high quality leathery surface. This is a gloss trim piece. It runs across the dashboard there. Uh, there's leather, contrast stitching. This is a nice aluminum finish right here. Moving across the top of the gauge cluster, this is leather. This is a nice soft touch material. 
more of this rubberized leathery surface here with more contrast stitching just really nice high-end confidence inspiring construction all around here lexus's steering wheel designs are pretty cool uh this isn't really a performance model at all but it does still come with paddle shifters button layout's pretty good here i just really like these steering wheels this one has some nice thumb slots digital gauge cluster so there is a physical ring in there and then these are physical needles but that is a screen as is the actual speedometer there different drive modes here again not really a performance car but you've got normal and then eco and a sport mode doesn't do much i promise you infotainment system is really the weak point in this vehicle uh it's only controlled via this touchpad right here lexus has begun integrating touch screens into its updated models uh, like i know the new rx comes with a touch screen but unfortunately the ES hasn't moved to the touchscreen yet, so you're forced to rely on this system, which is just really cumbersome. Uh, it's really unacceptable, frankly, for an infotainment system to be this bad in 2021. You can learn to live with it. So it is a touchpad here, and you can see I'm scrolling across this row of options there. You move through via swipes, and it's not really a cursor. It just moves you from button to button, and it can be a little touchy you don't know if you're going to jump one or two choices just really frustrating and then when you want to click it you press down on the pad and it does click they could do a lot better than this we'll leave it at that let's check out the back seat so given that this vehicle is now built on the same platform as the avalon there's plenty of space in the second row so you can see Sitting behind myself here, I'm about 5 feet 10, 5 11, and I've got plenty of room for my legs. There's a pretty good sized hump right here. That's where the drive shaft runs for the all wheel drive system. Yeah, not too claustrophobic. Back doors are just as high quality as they are up front. Map pockets on both the driver and passenger seat backs. Nice big cushy center armrest with two cup holders. And then, like I said, there's that pass-through to the cargo area. Additionally, there's a 12-volt outlet and two USB-A ports back here, along with some air vents. certainly isn't the most exciting vehicle it's not particularly fast it doesn't have many fancy features but that's kind of the point there's 50 so the two and a half liter four-cylinder engine only makes 203 horsepower it certainly isn't fast uh, in fact I find it to be a little bit underpowered I know offering the four cylinder is a way for Toyota to efficiently, affordably offer this vehicle with all wheel drive, given that this two and a half liter four cylinder is already made to work with all wheel drive in a variety of other Toyota products. But I just find that in a vehicle like this, you're wanting for 50 to 100 more horsepower. Uh, the V6 ES, that's the ES350, makes 302 horsepower. That engine is plenty powerful course that engine is also only available with front wheel drive you have to choose either power or traction you can't really have both with this vehicle that said this thing is extremely comfortable the cabin is really quiet everything's really high end the ride is nice it's super smooth super plush it's really really easy to drive the seats are comfortable the bolstering isn't super high, but to keep you in place, the leather is high end. It's really, really nice. This is a vehicle that's really easy to cruise down the highway in. I reviewed an ES hybrid earlier this year, and I actually found myself driving a little bit faster than I should have been on the highway just because it's so smooth that you can't really tell how fast you're going. So I found myself going a little bit faster than I should have at times. Even the leather on the steering wheel feels really nice. It's pretty squishy. I don't know how well this will age. 
this all-wheel drive system obviously isn't meant for going off-road. I think that's pretty clear, but it's not really meant for performance either. What it's really geared to is just low traction takeoffs from a dead stop. Uh, if you found yourself street parked and there were maybe one or two inches of snow on the ground, this all-wheel drive powertrain would be able to get out of that parking spot a little bit more easily maybe than say just a front wheel drive ES. And the same goes for just driving in inclement weather. Uh, this all wheel drive system, it isn't on all the time. It's only active when the vehicle senses slippage. So you're not really gonna get improved handling from it. It's really just for those low traction situations. Coming up to the speed bump here, going 15 miles per hour, that was super smooth. We'll go a little bit faster over this one up here. Go 20, pretty smooth as well. And this third one down here is a little bit bigger. Try to go about 25. Yeah, not bad. I was ready for an impact and there never was one. So there's your look at the 2021 Lexus ES250 all-wheel drive. Like I said, this all-wheel drive system is really only made for low speed, low traction on-road situations. So say you come out to your car and there are two or three inches of snow on the road. In theory, this all-wheel drive system will be helpful there, but I find those scenarios to be few and far between. Uh, just this week, my area saw a lot of snow and I was looking forward to maybe getting to drive this thing in the snow, but sure enough, every time I got out on the road, the roads were just wet. And given that, and given that this all-wheel drive system is only available with this little two and a half liter four cylinder, uh, the car only makes 203 horsepower, I would still probably go with the ES350, which comes with a three and a half liter V6 making 302 horsepower. Uh, that 99 horsepower makes a big difference. And given that this all-wheel drive system is really only likely to help you once or twice a year in most environments, uh, I have to think most people would still probably prefer the added power of the V6 to the added traction you get here from this all-wheel drive system. But that said, either way, the ES is an extremely comfortable, high-end, well-built vehicle. It's relatively reasonably priced. It doesn't offer the performance or curb appeal of a European midsize sedan, but most people will love this vehicle just for the consistency, the familiarity, the experience you get from a Lexus dealership. Uh, everything in here is really well-built. This vehicle is super nice to drive, really great highway cruiser. Uh, it doesn't really offer you much excitement, but for many people out there who just want a comfortable, reliable luxury sedan, it's gonna be really hard to beat the ES. Thank you for watching.